Welcome to a new lab for our STM32 C0 MOOC. So in this lab, we're going to look at the low power modes of the STM32 C0. We will start by looking at the STM32 C0 low power modes. So in this lab, we will use the stop mode. And to wake up, we'll use the RTC alarm and also the external interrupts. So we will start in run mode for five seconds. So indicated by a green LED on. And then we will enter the stop mode. So when the system exits the stop mode, we'll go back to run mode. And this will be indicated by a flashing green LED. On the stm 2 c 0 there is a simple low power scheme with run mode, stop mode, standby, and shutdown. So starting from the run mode, so let's look at you know, the power consumptions for the different modes. So run mode, so as you can see, very excellent dynamic power consumptions with 80 microamp per megahertz. In the stop mode, we can go down to 80 microamp. And for the wake up time, 2.7 microseconds, so pretty fast. For the wake up source, so we have RTC, GPIO, so as excellent interrupt, I square C, and UART. In standby, we can go down to 8 microamp, so very low power mode but the wake-up time is going to be a little bit longer so than the stop mode with 23 microseconds. Wake-up source are the BOR, the independent watchdog, and some wake-up IOs. The lowest power mode we have is the shutdown, where we can go down to 20 nanoamp. So that's amazing. And the wake-up time is going to be a little bit longer than standby with 385 microseconds for the wake-up source. So you have the reset pin and a few IOs. So we're going to look in particular to one mode, which is called the stop mode. So this is the mode we'll be using in this lab. The stop mode is the lowest power mode with full retention and only 2.7 microseconds wake up time to run mode at 12 MHz. The content of the RAM and all peripheral registers are preserved in stop mode. All high-speed clocks are stopped in stop mode. The 32 kHz external oscillator and the 32 kHz internal oscillator can be enabled. Several peripherals can be active and wake up from stop mode, like the I2C or the UART. Wake up time, so this is going to be 2.7 microseconds if you wake up on RAM and 5.9 microseconds from flash. So, here is a little bit more explanation about the stop mode. So here, let's start you know, by this diagram right there, on this side. Active cells, so as you can see, the main regulator is still active. USART, I2C, are still active, so you can wake up you know, from these two peripherals. And GPIOs, so especially GPIOs that can be configured as external interrupt to wake up the system from stop mode. And that's what we're also going to use here. Then you have the preservation of the SRAM, so full preservation of the SRAM, 6 or 12K, depending on C0811 or C031. Backup registers are preserved, LSI and LSC are still active, uh, CSS on LSC, that's still active, and individual peripheral clocks also can be activated. Um, now for what has been turned off, Basically, you have uh, uh, the CPU that is off in this mode, in stop mode, and also the high-speed clock like HSI48 and HSC and CSS data turn off or data actually in a power down mode. Now, if we look on this side, so first, let's look at the source of reset. So source of reset, of course, the NRST pin, so that's a reset pin of the sm 32 c 0 the burnout reset, the power down reset, the POR also, so power on reset, and the independent watchdog. For the wake up source, they are listed right here. So wake up pins, RTC, the LSE, the CSS uh, of the LSE, so the clock security of the LSE, all GPIOs that can be you know, configured as a EXTI or you know, create some events, USART, and I2C. 
Now let's have a look at the RTC. So let's look at the overview of the RTC. So the RTC peripheral features an ultra low power calendar and alarm which runs in sleep and stop mode. So we will use the RTC in this lab, use the RTC alarm to wake up from stop mode. The RTC consumes only 1.13 microamp per megahertz. The calendar is provided in binary coded decimal, also known as BCD format. So this reduces the software load, especially when you have to display the date and time. Let's start the lab. So using your STM32 cube ID, create a new project, file, new, STM32 project. Select the STM32 C031C6T6. Select it right here also. And then press next. Now we're going to give a name to our project. So I'm going to name it STM32 low power. Right, so you can give it the name you want and then click finish. We will start by configuring the RTC, so the real time clock. So to do this, you will go under timers and then select RTC. And first we'll activate the clock, so the clock source. Then you will activate the calendar that we'll use and then select the alarm, you know, that will be internal alarm A, which will be the source of our wake up from stop mode. So from the pinout and configuration tab, select timers, select RTC. And now we're going to activate the clock source. We'll activate the calendar and also select our alarm A to be an internal alarm A. We will also enable the RTC interrupts. So we will enter the stop mode using WFI, so wait for interrupt. So this will be an interrupt that will wake up the system. To activate the interrupt, go to NVIC settings right here and enable the interrupt. Now we will go you know, to the parameter settings and configure the RTC. So both the calendar and also the alarm later on. So first for the calendar, so you're going to select you know, the time so in my uh, example, I'm going to select 4.30 p.m. Okay, parameter settings. So let's make some space a little bit. That, okay, a little bit more. All right, first thing, we're going to uh, take care of the calendar. So first, the time. So I'm going to put, you know, 4.30 p.m. So and now, 30, right there. And that's it, zero seconds. So we will now select the calendar date in BCD format. So this, in my example, will be Friday, April 7th of 2023. Scroll down. Now we're going to look at the date. So first, we select, so I was talking about Friday, April 7th of 2023. Last step for the RTC, we will set the alarm, so alarm A. So in my case, Friday at 4.30 and 15 seconds. So 15 seconds after the calendar time. So first, okay, let's remove this So information. You just press here. This will remove that to give us more space. Okay, so we said 4.30. So same as before, but now, 15 seconds later, so we'll add 15 seconds right there. And one more change. We're going to change, you know, the alarm date to be a weekday, which is Friday in our case, because, you know, we set it up like this earlier in the calendar. In the pinout, we will now add two IOs. So configure two IOs. PC14 connected to the user button will be configured as a GPIO external interrupt. So every time we press the button, we will wake up from stop mode, basically. And then we will use also the LED, the green LED that we always use, you know, so to indicate where we are in the code, in run mode or stop mode or waking up from stop mode. So we'll use, you know, the LED. So configure PA5 as GPIO output. So in the pinout here, we'll configure PC13 as GPIO EXTI13, external interrupt. 
and then also PA5 as a GPIO output for the LED. So don't forget to enable the EXTI line 4 to 15 interrupts. So for the EXTI line 13. So to do this, you will go in the pinout configuration, then NVIC under systems, and enable or you know check the box for EXTI line 4 to 15. Okay, so under system right there. So it's actually system core. And go to NVIC. And here is the XTI line 4 to 15, so enable it. As you can see, you also have the RTC that we enabled before. Enabled right there, the, extra, so the RTC interrupts. We can now generate the code. So save your project and generate the code. Yes, go to the CNC perspective because we're going to be adding some code. Okay. First part of the code will be added in the user code to section in main.c. So the first will be in run mode, so indicated by turning on the LED for five seconds and then turning it off. Then we'll enter the stop mode. First, we suspend the tick and then we use the HAL function, which is HAL power enter stop mode with two parameters, so with the power ma uh, main regulator on, and also the way of entry, so in our case, WFI, so wait for interrupt. When we wake up, we will resume the tick, so this why you know, we'll add it with code, HAL resume tick. So the code to be added can be found in the description of this video. In main.c, go to the user code begin to section, right here, and add the first part of the code. Now, second part of the code will be added in the while loop of your main function. So this will be when the microcontroller is going to wake up from stop mode, and we will just toggle the LED every second. In the while loop, right here, we will add the second part of the code, which is the toggling of the LED every second when we wake up from stop mode. You can now build the project. Once built, make sure so your board also is connected. We can now flash the project code. So to do this, so instead we're not going to enter in our debug like we did uh, before. We're just going to flash in our the code. So to do this, you just need to press on this icon right there. Okay. And then we will flash the code right here. The code has been flashed correctly, so programmed inside the flash of the microcontroller. And now we can, you know, try to execute the code and test it. Let's execute our code. So let's reset first. So the LED is on for five seconds. So this is in run mode. Now we enter stop mode. We'll wait for the RTC alarm to wake up the system. the RTC alarm triggered, and now the system is back to run mode, executing you know, the while loop with the blinking of the LED every second. Let's see the second wake up source now. So we reset the code, so press the black button, release, so we're in run mode for five seconds. We enter stop mode, and now to wake up, press the user button. This will wake up your microcontroller, and now we execute the while loop with the LED blinking every second. So this was a very good, you know, I think, uh, example, you know, to show you the low power modes of the SM32, and I hope you learned a lot. So thank you.